This is the behind the scenes documentary of me sleeping. Notice Mike is rocking a very uh, Kevin Smith, Dave Grohl esque beard. <laughs> I like the beard actually. I think it works. Don't you? Does it work? Uh, it's my strike it, it beard. Works, it works. Oh, it's you, my you, strike you, you beard Letterman? because uh, Mike Fail and O'Toole and Random Acts uh, support the Writers Guild of America strike. Mainly because we have no writers and it doesn't really concern <laughs> us. So we can afford to join in the bandwagon and be trendy and say, I'm Mike O'Toole and I support the WGA. You do? Yeah. See, I I'm kind of mad they're, because they're not, you know, what about all my favorite movies and stuff? I think I what see? they're asking is fair and uh, they're creative, creative people. Because the hosts really on shows now are just sort of vessels. Uh, you know, delivery is really important, but if you don't have steady content and uh, fresh material, that kind of, that kind of, you're, you're at a loss. So, uh, and for things that are like uh, weekly and uh, daily or nightly shows, like our late night shows, it's important to have uh, fresh material. And uh, What do you think about like David Letterman though, uh, preparing and like Conan and all those guys preparing to go without a script? I know that they're using scripts with their writers are back or whatever. Well, they but... hired. What they did is they. I'm not. Sh don't. No one take this as gospel uh, from me. But I think. Well, one of. The, I mean, one of the things they did is like. It's not only. Not only the writers, but you know, a lot of their crew are out of work. Anybody who works in the inter entertainment industry, uh, good people are out of work. Lowly, lowly PAs and interns and stuff are kind of people who are living. People think that the entertainment industry is everything is all glamorous and everything, but that's really just glorified. Uh, the majority of folks, um, particularly those behind the scenes who are working really hard, are still, you know, uh, working paycheck to paycheck. Right. So, uh, you know, and still if, hand if, mouth. so even though you might be employed by like the Late Show or something, you're still uh, you're still pretty <clears throat> much freelance. You know, you're working through the company, and offering your services, working as part of the crew. And you have that skill to offer, but if that show shuts down because there's no writers, you're you're stuck. So um, a lot of people are working per diem, you know. Uh, and these are these are good people. Do you think um, that uh, the reality, sh uh, like what they're saying, that the reality show is going to profit in this next the next few uh, maybe the next year? Do you think they're going to come back in a big way? Uh, I mean, I don't know. See, that's that's debatable because I mean, you have. Um, I mean, it's it's convenient for for industry folks who want to collect for the big wigs because they want to collect their money and stuff. But right. But I mean, you have to. You're still looking at ratings. You're still looking at what the audiences are gonna, audiences are going to want. Uh, you know, there's nothing that says that that the audience are they're looking for more reality shows and stuff. I mean, uh, I mean that's kind of the thing is yeah, you don't have to pay uh, reality. TV stars there, uh, the same. I don't even think they have to be part of the union, per se. Um, and then there, people are getting famous for just kind of being there as a rea reality show s star, quote unquote, which is such a misnomer. I mean, you know, you used, you used to have to have talent and uh, persevere to, to be uh, a star. Now you just sort of just have to be present so long as there's a camera just on you. Just show up. Gee, like, Kind of like this. Um, Show up. You know, we're in a different area, you know. So yeah, and then I also think I also think what really will prosper is stuff like this, stuff unique uh, content, grassroots <coughs> grassroots based stuff. Um, you know, the proliferation of the internet, uh, media, multimedia. Uh, we've got you know um, video and audio content uh, coming in all the time, user generated, uh, all types of uh, community stuff, video blogs, and all that stuff. <coughs> That uh, maybe uh, executives, big TV folks will be checking out that stuff more. Uh, Lord knows there's a wealth of creative material coming out of that uh, that you know tunnel, and uh, I don't know. Sounded sound of an observation as any could be, I guess. In the meantime, we could just keep making our shows. I kind of I kind of envisioned it like well, at the very least. There's always our stuff, which doesn't rely on writers, as if the world is going to turn well, to it. But well, that's, well, that's kind of what I was. So what? That's kind of what I was saying. Is like, yeah. is the, the more grassroots stuff. The more uh, mainstream media sort of stagnates because you know the absence of writers and fresh material and stuff. Uh, 
the more people may, you know, entertain, quote unquote, the idea of checking out alternative um, uh, <coughs> news and information and entertainment and all that stuff. You don't gotta do the part where you just said news. I'm gonna loop that because the way you say it, news, news, news. <laughs> it's even that says news. No, but it's right. He's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put this immediately up on YouTube. I'm gonna put it black and white with letterbox and music it's, underneath. Uh, it's behind the scenes. It's behind the scenes, but stuff. this is also Mike on the strike. Well, on yeah, my, so my yeah, this page. is my, this is my strike. So Mike beard. is rocking a strike beard like David Letterman was. You know. And he's since shaved it. Well, everybody, every, David Letterman shaved his beard on the air. I heard. I yeah, that's right. That. But no, Conan had a nice beard. He's rocking a nice beard. The first beard of his life. This is the first time I've really bothered to grow a <clears> full, <throat> more fuller beard, and uh, and yeah, it's uh. So we'll my probably... strike beard as a host and on camera person. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm in more in the public. You and I are more in the public eye than say Joe Average. So why not use you know this as our forum as well to uh, let people know. But I mean, as a creative mind, as a as a writer, so to speak, not necessarily professionally, but you know, to I could see myself in that role, and so I I can kind of empathize with uh, the writers in this situation and I think again I think what they're asking is fair to be compensated for all the new media stuff that's that their material is being like recycled um, you know for and I think it's a fair <coughs> fair thing um, going to bed you know so what do you so what is this you're uh, tired and you're in the green room and you're passing out what like right now is like is that what hap is that what's happening are you gonna be passing out in here for that because we've been this is how hardcore Mike and I are. We're just constantly engaged in our biz. We're gonna sleep on the road. Yeah, I want, I, yeah, I want uh, people to get a taste of uh, what we're doing and how hard we're working and the diverse projects we have going on. Um, I know qualifying yourself online is kind of so 1998 at this point, but you know, so in a documentary fashion, we're here and and letting you know uh, what's going on. Uh, you know. Video blogging, so video video diary. Video blogging wasn't around in 1998. Diarrhea, say, was it? No. Video diarrhea. This is diary. Diarrhea. diarrhea. Was video blogging around in 98? Not really, right? Well, I mean, sure, it was there in fits and starts, some forms, but certainly not as popular. With broad, proliferation of broadband internet, it uh. <clears throat> not yeah, like with everybody, like now it's like technically everyone's doing it, but yeah. No, no, no like 2000, 2001 was a big big year for. Folks really started getting into video blogging, and then a couple years later, it started to pick up steam, and then YouTube. So, how to many uh, insults do you think we're gonna get from Caleb? About this online, yeah. About this video. Yeah. I don't know. I don't like to talk about that. I don't like I know, to. I, I, I don't. Well, I actually, don't, you don't want to give them press, right? No, I don't want to give them press. I, I mean. Want me to edit that out? You can leave. You can leave. I want to leave that. I, I want to say I don't. It's just don't inevitable, even, you know. You know how it is. I don't even want to qualify the people who will criticize material and not I mean it is too much to just and it is sort of a stock answer to be like well why don't you try doing this but uh I'm gonna say uh as an artist slash entertainer there's a desire to sort of create new stuff and exist to inspire and at the same time I just sort of an eternal need to document my myself and my goings on it's sort of it's a purging feeling for me and I like doing it and if you don't, if you don't want to check it out, you don't. Nobody's yeah. forcing you to check it out. Want to look at it, uh, look at it. And you know what? If you want to, if you want to track <clears throat> people's ideas and the material they create, then uh, you know you want to be, uh, you want to put people down and stuff. Well, you know, spell my name right. So long as you spell my name right, it makes you know um, trashing people, stuff like that. Uh, random attacks and stuff that's good for business it makes the rubber rubber neckers check in and uh, also, and gives, see what also missing. gives the creators more fuel for the fire because that that stuff doesn't necessarily stop me or make me upset it just it actually invigorates me to keep going yeah it makes me like a slightly uh, pissed off but well as long as because I'm kind of like of the mind if you're gonna be insulting my stuff then why don't you up the to anyone not you know just him but like yeah. to, to up the ante and step up because so many times on YouTube you get the haters who are like, "Why don't you go and do stuff? Do this, well, do that. Your thing sucks." And then like they half, never do anything else. Half the battle is just producing something to, to at all to to begin with, and it's like a, you know, like like Marshall McLuhan said, the medium is the message. I mean, there's a novelty and there's a, um, an interest factor in us just doing something like this with the camera and documenting stuff. 
uh, and then you got to figure out, well, what do I want to say? What do I want to create? And and everybody's going to have a different opinion on what's on what's the right way to do something. But you got to do what's true to you, and just kind of hope. And and if it's organic <coughs> enough, and if you're and if you're real in what you're saying, and the and the whatever kind of stuff you choose to uh, to um, bore uh, creatively, um, there'll be there'll be an audience for it. If 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 it's good. In, in whatever way, any way, somebody will have something to say about it, and you can't you can't pander uh, so much to to an audience. You kind of just got to roll with with what you desire. Um, and and the minute you start like catering too much to a particular audience, that's <clears throat> when it starts losing its authenticity. I think at the same time, I'm a big believer in uh, manufacture for use. You know if uh, if people are into stuff, then you should you should listen to your audience. You should communicate. I mean, that's what I. That's the other thing I really like about this is like communications and uh, and going back and forth and being able like to it. being able to reach out. Why to, not? To I mean, people. YouTube is a dialogue. I mean, it's not just you know the place. It's a place to put anything. There's no definition on it. You can put. It's a place where ideas can grow and be shared. You know, that's why I like the fact that people do put up like blogs right. and vlogs. And right. Like, and if know. somebody if somebody's saying, well, you should do it like you should do. You should, where. you should do it like this or do it like that or why did you do this or why did you do that then you should just react well yes and okay that's your that's your, that's your cue man <laughs> uh, I mean it, you know yeah. that's just their comment and that's cool and right and uh, you know we have the luxury doing smaller scale stuff where we can kind of create what we want and tailor it to how we see things and and you do uh, keep in the back of your mind input you wanna, you wanna, um, if the material you're you're making generates feedback, you keep that in mind to an extent. Um, but the minute you start pandering, the minute it starts losing its organic quality, I think, and uh, I don't know. It's, it starts becoming content on demand. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's not really people a will, democracy in that way. If you have, uh, I don't know, if you're creating something that's uh, that's a cool thing and and uh, unique stuff and, and noteworthy material people will people will check it out and nothing attracts a crowd more than a crowd yeah. I mean so that's the thing is like the amount of followers something has uh, doesn't necessarily mean if it's a small group it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a noteworthy product you know just maybe it hasn't picked up steam for whatever reason in that uh, pl moment, you know, uh, a lot of it is right place, right time, uh, right place, right time kind of thing. Um, and uh, and yeah, I mean, you can have a you can a, you can have sort of a small cult audience and um, insanely loyal uh, audience. And um, I mean, if you have anybody looking in, I mean, I'm thankful that even one person checks out my stuff. And so. I mean, you just kind of, kind of roll with it, you know. I mean, so many people, as a, as a crowd, as a, as a, as a uh, <coughs> populace, have uh, their own opinions on what, you know, they like. I mean, I'm sure the, the movies and the media that I consume, I don't enjoy every single aspect of something that's someone's body of work. But me neither. I think you, I think you do. I think you have to look at it as a body of work. Um, well, like you say, like a. Like a like a series of movies, like the yeah. Godzilla or Star Wars or even Kevin Smith stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think I think I think to like see, I sometimes feel sacrilegious about like if I like does does the fact that I like all the other movies by Kevin Smith, but I don't like Mallrats, does that make me not a fan? Well, not, not no, because I li I, I like what heart. he does. I just don't I don't particularly dig Mall, but no, even like I love Godzilla movies. I love studying them. But I don't like every single one. Yeah, yeah. I think there's some that bore me to tears. Yeah. Star Wars, you know, a good chunk of those. You gotta look at the overall <laughs> message, I think, and uh, <clears throat> you know. I admire like usually the aesthetic, or I might admire the person's ideals even, or like like in Kevin's case, the way he speaks. Right. I mean, like in, he's in just a, a great guy as it is. In filmmake, like in the case of filmmaking, I mean, you gotta consider the the filmmaker has crafted crafted the piece and touching on all aspects they're looking at they they uh 
the piece of the pie is you know you have you have the, the writing and uh, you know the visual aspect and uh, you, <coughs> might not, you might not dig all of it but uh, you know rest assured I mean they have to as the director you're looking at the whole picture so to speak and uh, um, I don't know people like different shit man there you go you know uh, different strokes for different folks and uh, you know you just hope whatever you do as an artist um, whatever you create resonates with somebody but it does have to come from a personal place um, you know it's like with in writing's case anyway and I'm sure it's true for for other uh, um, other artistry as well I mean, it's a journey into the unknown you know for the creator as well so you know um, and when you're by the time you're done with the project it's almost like a child you know so so it's really it is easy to kind of get uh, upset when if people are saying negative stuff but you gotta take the good with the bad and it's good it's you know it's something you've created so it's like a product of you and so it does it does kind of make you vulnerable uh, <coughs> putting yourself putting out, it out there, in the wild and stuff you know standing up there on the stage and uh, throwing your uh, your message out there um, and you know, as long as it's not like a didactic message, like a very preachy thing, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, you keep an open mind and roll with the punches, you know. And people, uh, people will either dig it or they won't. And I don't know. As a as a an artist, I guess for me, my point of view is like, hey, it's cool if you're checking it out at all. And I'm I'm a fan of again, like I said, um, communication as an art by itself so the back and forth um, I enjoy anyway so no matter what I produce whether it's like written or uh, or a visual uh, thing like a film or a video or or something audio like a podcast or spoken word or poetry or any of that stuff um, I like the, the feedback on it and hopefully you know it resonates with somebody ultimately like as an artist you're kind of reaching out and trying to figure out how we relate to each other as a civilization, you know, you're like you're doing your social commentary and uh, <clears throat> and um, trying to see what echoes with people and and trying to figure out, you know, stuff about the world and your own life and and basically <clears throat> what you figure out is kind of we're all we're all more we're all more similar than we are different uh, and you know so. Art in itself to create a dialogue, dialogue like that, whether it's internal or external, an actual conversation is uh, is what it's all about. I think in general, and if that's not true to other people, that's true for me. That's what I feel. So, cool. In my heart of hearts. Right ahead, my sub. All right. Oh, peace. He said peace. All right, guys. Thanks for checking out this uh, behind the scenes conversation. Thank you. He's also going to my show, too. MikeFalanOtool.com, everybody. Pimp out the sites, man, quick. And uh, MikeOcast.blogspot.com. Yeah, if you want to hear more of the same, if you want to hear more of the same and watch more of the same, go go from the top. Yeah. From the top, all of them. Check out my main website, MikeFalanOtool.com. Put that lower third up there. So. Yep. And, uh, and for audio updates from me on the fly while I'm working my tail off with different stuff, Check out mikeocast.blogspot.com and uh, a whole slew of stuff available for you. Um, yeah, I mean, mikeotoolwords.com. I mean, fuck, fuck, edit that out. Uh, yeah, never mind. Just go to mikefalinotool.com and mikeocast.blogspot.com and uh, all that shit. If you want to uh, comment on this video, saynow.com slash mikeotool. And of course, the obligatory MySpace link, myspace.com slash mycotool. Right. Or as Barry yeah. from the Bleeding Bleedings would say, MySpace is kind of passe these days. It is. It is passe, but to, to have a presence on there. I think it's, it's still, you know. At least if, uh, right for to. me, posting up links to all my shit on there and uh, and the podcast player is right on the, right on the MySpace page. So, as I said in one of, in one of, my, one of my podcasts, uh, I don't have music playing on my MySpace page like most folks do another artist's music, uh, but I have my own, uh, you know, podcast player there, and it's ready to go. Click play, and uh, you know my words or my art 
and it spews right from there. The podcast player is the center of the universe at, at my MySpace page. And I think, yeah, to, to at least have a presence on there because so many uh, kids are on there um, uh, searching around that, I mean, a lot of uh, my audience at least checking out the podcast, checking out some of my, some of my videos, and checking out my poetry uh, is, is from MySpace. And then they've sort of followed me over to different stuff. So that's cool. And, uh, and the poetry was big, too, people checking out my poetry and stuff, because I always kind of assume uh, the way people roll is sort of just checking out the pictures and maybe checking out the podcast. I'm so grateful for that, uh, you know, because that's like I can, I can uh, you know, flip a switch and, uh, and talk to all those folks wherever I am, and it's right up online for them uh, almost instantly. And, uh, but the poetry was big because that's kind of one of, one of the first uh, art forms that I really honed in my writing and stuff mm -hmm. that I, and I got compliments on too. So that was cool when people mentioned that to me that they were checking that out because I didn't even uh, pimp that out so much. It was sort of an organic thing, so that was really, that was really cool. And that hits me in, in the heart uh, too when people are saying that that's a cool thing because that is literally, you know, from my heart. Well, not so much literally. if. If poetry or words were literally pouring from my heart, I'd have some kind of, kind of condition and I'd have to go to the hospital because that's kind of a weird condition to have that they just fall out. You know, blood cells are, you know, so lot, that's reciting Shakespearean uh, soliloquies and we're in trouble. So. Cool. Anyway, that's it.